I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackGear.com. Today we're going to install a Galfer front wave rotor on our 2015 STG Yamaha YZF R3. Okay, when installing the wave rotors, Galfer recommends replacing the brake pads at the same time per their warranty now. They also require the use of their own pads, right? Their own proprietary pads, right? Not every rider, I'll tell you this up front, not every rider follows the pad recommendation. The most important thing is this, okay? When you put this on and when you put new brake pads on, I know in your mind you're thinking, Hey man, I've got brand new brakes. This is going to be great. The first application is going to be amazing. That's not how it is. Actually, when everything is brand new, the rotors and the pads, the first few applications, the brakes are very, very weak. They don't perform very well at all. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One of the main reasons is we need to transfer some friction material from the pad to the rotor to get this stuff to work right. So what I'm telling you is this. When you first bolt these on, you get yourself ready for your test ride, right? I want you to do a couple of very low speed stops in a parking lot, perhaps your subdivision street, right? Very low speed stops, and you'll literally feel them begin to bite more and more on each application. From there, when you go out onto the road to bed these things in correctly, you wanna leave yourself ample stopping room. Don't put yourself in any type of panic situation. Go out and consciously use the brakes quite a bit. You wanna take a route where you're gonna be able to use the brakes quite a bit, nice easy applications, steady pressure, and you'll literally feel them begin to really come in. They recommend up to as much as 100 miles of that. Honestly, as you go through it, you'll feel when the brakes are right and when the brakes are there. But I encourage you to put in the time and the effort to protect your investment and to make sure you extract optimum performance from the upgrade that you've just made. Now what do we need to do this? We need a front stand. I'm going to use a pit bull. You have to be able to support the front of the motorcycle. We have to get the front tire off and the front caliper off. I'm going to use my little buddy here, pit bull pit crew tire wedge, because this supports the wheel makes changing the wheel so much easier, right? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this into position. From there, I've got a half inch ratchet with a 19 millimeter socket. I've got an 18 millimeter wrench. Those are gonna allow me to get the axle off. When we reinstall the axle, I'm gonna lubricate it a little bit. That allows it to go in and out a lot easier. I highly recommend you do that to your motorcycle. Now, we're also going to be replacing the brake pads as we go through this, right? So. The caliper has to come off. It's going to allow us to get the rotor out. You can't take the wheel off with the caliper in place. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get the caliper off. For that, we've got a Torx. Go ahead and break those loose. I believe this is a 500, I think. Be able to slide the caliper and the bracket out of the way like so the factory pads are in phenomenal shape but you know in this situation galfer has supplied us with a set of especially these are compounds they're working on right now so we're going to go out we're going to test this compound on the spike after we get this job done so they're working on developing the pads and we're going to work with them on that just a little bit okay calipers off and out of the way next up is going to be the axle Eight, I'm sorry, 17 millimeter wrench here. We've got a 19 socket on that half inch ratchet. So end of the day, these are pretty basic hand tools. This is simplified even further 
by the fact that we only have one rotor on this bike, so we don't have to worry about indexing the wave rotors at all. Go ahead and pull the axle through, like so, and we'll roll it out from the bike. This is a great chance to right, clean up your wheel real nicely while you have it off the motorcycle. Now we'll go over to the workbench and change the rubber. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the Galfer rotor ready for installation. Little brake cleaner here. Oftentimes, rotors will be coated in something to help preserve their finish, prevent corrosion during storage and or transportation. So we'll just go ahead and wipe that off, right? Fortunately, we are out of shop rags today. I am down to paper towels. Our Daytona Barber vacation seemed to eat up all of the shop towels. Okay, now we need to break loose all of the bolts that are holding on stock rotor. Got our Allen 3 8 ratchet. Each of these is going to be held in with a little thread locker, something I find that works nicely. If you saw I broke it loose a bit. Kind of work it in each direction. But don't be panicked by the fact that it, it comes out a little hard, okay? Because that is the thread locker holding that bolt in place. And you can see by reversing direction a couple of times, that really eased that quite a bit. When we reinstall, I'm going to use just a little bit of medium or blue thread locker on the rotor bolts. As I say in all my videos, you can see all that right there. I will not be using a torque wrench, that's a personal choice. I urge you to do what you feel most comfortable with. Okay, now we need to repeat this process through all five of the mounting bolts. When we come back, we're going to be ready to install the new rotor. Remember though, take your time here. A little back and forth goes a long way. You know, you don't, you don't want to just force it and then cause some damage to the wheel because these bolts are threaded directly into the casting. You can see the huge difference that made by just simply reversing direction just a little bit with that bolt made it a whole lot easier to get it out of there. So I would really encourage that you do the same thing when you're working on your bike. Okay, all the bolts are out. There was definitely a good amount of thread locker on there, enough that I'm gonna rinse each one of these bolts off, just clean the debris off. Cause I think moving forward, it's gonna help us get it back together a lot cleaner. The stuff all evaporates, there's no need to wipe it off. Stock rotor. Set that off to the side for right now. I think each one of these holes too, I'm just gonna hit them real quick. These are all through holes. So anything I spray in there is just gonna go down through the back, no problems there. Wipe everything off. You wanna make sure that the surface, the mounting surface, the actual rotor itself here, that you have no debris that is gonna be in between the rotor and the wheel itself, because obviously that could create a situation where the rotor would be, you know, off center and uh, it would start life warped, essentially. Make sure the rotor's clean and we'll set it into position here, like so. We're gonna use blue thread locker on this. Remember, no torque wrench. I'm not going to use one. If you choose to use one, that's great. Look up the torque spec online. I'll start each one of these by hand. We're coating that thread locker on there. I want to make sure all the bolts start nice and easy. No cross threading. Mechanical Loctite is no good. You can see already that rotor looks phenomenal on this wheel, right? No question. 
Okay. Now we're just going to go around and just get these bad boys finger tight. Okay, I'm not really going to run it down. They're going in real easy, so I think that little cleanup paid some benefits. Not really tightening it at all right now, just getting it just barely seats against that rotor. Once we've done that, we'll sweep back in a crisscross pattern and we'll torque this down. Okay, we're ready to start torquing it down now. Crisscross pattern. Nice even pressure. Especially if you're not using a torque wrench, you want it to feel really even on each one of the bolts. Okay, one more time. I'll be ready to go over there and get the caliper all prepped, installing the new Galfer pads. Okay, we're headed back over to the bike. Okay, we're gonna get the caliper prepped, replace the pads. Let's go ahead and just clean it up a little bit. No need to use a ton there. The bike's relatively new, only 800 miles. Okay, now, now that I've got the caliper pistons cleaned off, We'll go ahead and compress them back in their bore, like so. Now we have to remove the pad retaining pin. Let's get this cutter pin out of there. That'll be reused. They use two for safety. Make sure you put both back in. Now the retaining pin itself. This was a whole new caliper design. There were no part numbers for these pads from any manufacturer. That's why there is a pad compound in development here at Galfer. Let's go ahead and slide that pad off. All right, and now I'm gonna go ahead and slide caliper mounting bracket off of the caliper. Get the pad out of there like so. Okay, the reason we're taking this off, I want to lube all this up. I want to make sure the caliper is able to float freely on the brake pads. I'm sorry, on the, on the caliper mounting bracket. And the pads are able to float back and forth without any issues. So we'll clean the rest of this out a little bit. Here. Keep the work table clean. Got some lubrication. What I like to do in a situation like this is we're going to use an old Phillips screwdriver. I've taken the top off, the tip off, ground it off, and insert that in here and just kind of work it around. Just nice even film in there, okay? Don't need very much, just a little bit. This one here is pretty small, about the same size as the uh, tool I'm using. Nice thin film in there. Okay, and we'll begin by sliding this back in. Make sure not to damage these boots at all. If the boots get damaged, they're unable to hold the contaminants out and hold the grease in. 
and you will have brake issues down the road. Make sure it floats freely, like so. Now for the new brake pads. I'm excited to get out on the street and test all this. board pad first by sliding the tongue into that slot now getting it into position here like so and the outboard pad right there and now we have our retainer pin it's going to slide through both of the pads So let's get this positioned so we can get our cotter pins through. These are key. Do not lose them. Do not forget to put them back in. This is a key safety item for sure. Due to the age of the motorcycle, you know, it's still the first season, only having 800 miles, I don't feel the need to service the brake fluid or anything. If this were the next season, right, I've already had the bike for a full season or the bike were a couple of years old when you're doing this service, I would highly recommend replacing the brake fluid at the same time due to the fact that it's so new and so low mileage, we're not going to do that now. Caliper's prepped, right? We are ready to go, right? Everything's floating freely. We've got our pads in there. We are ready for our wheel. One thing we do want to do now, like I said earlier, we're going to take and put a little film of grease on the axle. This is to ensure that the axle is able to be removed and reinstalled with ease in the future. Okay, let's get our wheel up into place here. We do have the benefit uh, right now of that pit bull pit crew tire wedge. That is one of the greatest tools ever. My good friend Charlie from Pit Bull. That is another one of his innovations guys one of the best in the business been around a long time great people over there let's grab our axle and let's get that threaded through like so axle nut now we can remove the tire wedge For that to be on there. Brake caliper. Put this into position. There was no thread locker on these bolts from the factory, so we're not going to uh, use any. Let's get the pads in position. Slide the caliper over the rotor, like so. Okay. finger tight to begin with. Once I have them both run down flush, then I'll torque them. Remember, before you ride the motorcycle, okay, you have to pump up the front brakes. Those caliper pistons have been pushed back in, so there will be no pressure to begin with. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and tighten up the axle. And we're almost ready for our road test. Okay. 
key right now. Pump up the front brakes until you have good solid lever. Everything feels great. The first thing I'm going to say is the motorcycle looks absolutely phenomenal. Those rotors made a huge difference aesthetically to this motorcycle. We're excited to get it out on the street, see how different it performs with the compound they've sent me. And that brings us to braking. I'm going to, I'm going to harp on it again. It is so important. When you initially take this thing out, remember very easy applications, parking lot or your subdivision street. Give yourself a ton of room, nice, easy application. You'll feel the first one, there won't be much there. The second one more, third one, so on and so forth down the line. You do that a couple of times, take it out on the street. Give yourself extra room, a ton of room. Don't take yourself out and put yourself in a situation where you might have to panic stop. Try and avoid that at all costs until you get these brakes to bed in. You'll feel it, right? Every stop that you add on to that process, you'll feel those things start to bite harder and harder. They recommend up to 100 miles. It happens typically a lot faster than that, but what I'm gonna encourage is exercise a ton of caution. If you don't, you squeeze them too hard, you put yourself in a panic stop situation, they're not efficient, right? There's no friction material from the pad transferred to the rotor yet. So it's gonna generate a ton of heat, and especially with this big front disc, it'll just warp it and then all the work you've done will be for nothing. You'll have to start all over again. So protect your investment and bed them in very slowly as they have recommended from Galfer. This is our Galfer front pad and wave rotor install on our 2015 STG Yamaha YZF R3.